So I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is the Public Works Committee of the City Council. Um, we are being videotaped to uh, be shown at a later time. Um, first item of business would be a couple of the minutes from our previous meeting. That was September 3rd. So the council is no more than one here, so I'd entertain a motion for you. So now I second it. I'll second it. All in favor. Aye. Aye. I'd like to also ask if we can move, because um, Ned and Jim are here from the DPW, I'd like to ask that we move up item 6 and to the first item statement of the So, gentlemen, you're going to review the proposed revision to the stormwater and flood control credit policy. Okay, great. You're welcome to just sit with us too. It just feels more formal. So either either one. It feels a little formal, but I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. Okay. Um, so you know, in the, in the first year of implementing the credit policy, you learn lessons as as you go along, and uh, you hear from a lot of different residents and businesses and things about uh, interest in applying for credits and how to how to go about it and. Uh, we were basically taking a lot of notes through the first year in terms of the things that were working well or were making it more difficult for people to apply for credit. So the, the basis of the um, of making the credits um, was essentially listening to feedback we were getting from either residents or businesses or farmers or other people that were having to pay for the bill. Um, and the, the, uh, the credits Basically, there's, there's sort of four categories um, when you go through them. The first one is a small residential um, credit where people would be eligible to get a credit for having a, a properly functioning dry well on their property. Um, after, the, after the ordinance went in place, the bill started going out. We got a fair number of calls from people submitting information how they had spent money installing the dry well on the property and that it was effective. And, reducing runoff in the property. We do support that type of activity, and we thought it was a good thing that people were doing this. And uh, we thought that it made sense, um, because it's an activity that, that as a department we would support, that we would um, add something in the residential credit manual that would allow us to um, properly approve a credit for dry well. So the proposal is a 25% reduction in fee for a functioning dry well with some requirements there to give us information on what we have. Um, the, next, the next element of the change to the uh, policy is relative to an increase in the credit percentage from 50 percent, uh, from 250 percent to 20 percent for properties that are actively enrolled in Chapter 61 land protection. So the way the, the way the policy was drafted originally by the Board of Public Works is that if you had Chapter 61 land protection on your property, the Board of Public Works at the time considered that to be more of a temporary, um, more of a temporary protection than if you had uh, a conservation restriction, which is more permanent. Because if you have your land in Chapter 61 protection, you can take it out of that protection at some point if you choose to do so. So for that reason, the Board originally had, decide, had, had decided that there would be 50% for more, you know, for permanent restriction, 20% for something that would be being more temporary. There's quite a bit of concern and feedback from um, people with Chapter 61. A lot of farmers were complaining about this in terms of equity and fairness of that particular aspect of the credit. So we, we gave that a lot of thought and we thought that it would make sense um, if, if there's property that does have Chapter 61 status protection at the time their stormwater bill gets sent out, that they should be eligible for a 50% credit if at some point in the future they remove that type of protective status from their land, then they would lose the credit. So we figured that was a little bit more equitable for people, and there was a lot of concern about that particular element of the policy. And this was a, a reasonable way, I think, of, of the only thing. Can you tell me the percentage increase again, please? I think I'm just not sure if I'm hearing it right. Sure. I mean, it would be the percentage increase in credit would be from 20 to 50. 20 to 50. Yeah. So the next, the next. I'm sorry. And dry well is 50. Uh, 25 percent. Oh, it's 25. Yeah. 
So the next part of it, uh, of the change, was related to the section that we had written about best management practices and stormwater management on property. Probably the most typically challenging application for people to do. And there was a great deal of confusion about the information to submit. Um, a lot of information would best be prepared by an engineer or someone that was extremely knowledgeable in stormwater management practices. Um, we found it to be um, technically a good section the way it was written, but practically in terms of implementing it and dealing with um, dealing with the uh, dealing with utility customers, rate payers, it wasn't it wasn't a very good um, it wasn't a very good uh, aspect to try to implement because it was it was technically challenging and confusing. So the changes that we made are all relative to making it easier for people to apply for a credit, making it easier and less time consuming for us to review the information that's submitted, and basically streamline um, credits for sites that have implemented best management practices such as detention basins or infiltration trenches or other things that we know that are um, that are that you know they were designed and somebody spent money installing these things to manage stormwater in a better way and we wanted to manage them. So um, basically we're trying to make that clearer and easier for rate payers to apply. The last um, the last key element I think of the credit policy change is adding a new credit that would give 100 percent credit to a property that is solely dedicated for use as a part of the stormwater management system. This is something that we didn't we didn't anticipate but came out when we sent out when we sent out 11,000 bills and we there weren't a lot when we sent out that many bills. Um, and one of them is that as some subdivisions were built um, in the past, there were some parcels that were carved out for the sole purpose to, to have a functioning detention basin. So there were homeowners um, organizations that were receiving bills from the city for parcel of land, and the sole purpose of the land was because it had to be a detention basin on it. So that didn't seem right in any way to us, so we thought it would make sense just to make that um, type of property, and there's only, I don't know how many there are, there's, there, there was only two or three circumstances where this came up, but um, they do exist. We didn't think that it made sense to send that type of property bill, and we proposed a change in credit policy for 100% credit. How many uh, properties are there of this type? I want to say we're aware of about two or three at this point, and I think it's an older, the manifestation of some older subdivisions, I think, is what we found. Um, but those, those are the part of, you know, the organizations to come forward and ask, and I think it was two or three. But the, in those situations, the entire parcel is solely uh, uh, a stormwater management tool? No, that's what we say. No. So those are the those <coughs> major changes. There are, there are some other little words and things in there, but those are the, the substantial changes, I think. Thank you. Thank you also for coming in today. And it was, um, they seem to make sense to me. And we knew when we were discussing this uh, decades ago, a couple of years ago, that the credits you're going to have to, that you may be back next year with something else. We kind of knew this was an organic document. I do have a slight, I think you did a great job, and I have a slight suggestion just when this goes. You're going to the council meeting this week, is that correct with this? Or? Are you on the agenda for this week? That I don't present? know. Okay. Well, when you do present it, no. no. Not yet. Not yet. When you do come to the council, what would be helpful, um, because I, there are four different items that have changed. If you could just highlight those right here, sure. that would just be helpful to see. Sure. And to start by just letting the counselors know, you know, there are four changes here in the credits. Well, uh, actually, we had an, an internal document that, um, we were working on that. But that was essentially just reading from you know, so it was like yeah. that sort of thing. That's, and it's that summary, and I think I would we could provide that summary. That well. summary might be great. And to and to also, because a lot of the counselors may have to have to speed on this, you know, they can have a copy of this, but let them know these are you know, four changes within a much larger document. Uh, I think would be helpful. Yeah. Is the department putting these 
proposed changes on, on, the, on the website, or is it you're waiting until a later point in the process, or maybe until they get passed? Or? We haven't put them on the website. Um, the people that they affect um, have been, you know, we, we talk to people, right? So they call and they have a concern, and we say, well, we're going to be looking at changing the current policy. So I think the words will a lot of impact the people that would be changed, would be impacted by these changes are aware of it. Because they're mainly beneficial in the development of the decision for that. So yeah, I, just, I think a lot of people would be happy about some of them, particularly the drywall credit. Uh, I'm sure probably some of the others. Yeah. Um, and 100% credit troubles me slightly. And I understand the purpose of it, but it's one of the main premises of this task force was that every single parcel should contribute whether public, private, nonprofit, whatever. So, so I understand that the, that's fair to give 100% credit for a, a piece of property whose sole purpose is to alleviate the problem he was created for. But um, there really, and I don't necessarily oppose it, but I just want to point out there really are supposed to be no entirely exempt properties, and this is creating a, an entirely exempt property. So I just want to point that out. So you're suggesting that pay like the dollar a year to the salary you get from your I'll take just a dollar. And this is this is just like like you said, this is just a periodic review and that's yeah. Anything else? Welcome council. We just kind of finished, I believe. Um, and this will come before the city council at some point, but it's four changes to the credit piece. And if one of us maybe can bring up to the at a later time, I'd be happy to go over them with you. I think I understand them. Um, they're pretty clear. I feel okay. Jim, thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Um, so we took item six uh, first, if you're looking at the agenda. Um, and we're going to go back now to item number three, which, which is regarding center court. Is that why you're standing up or are you leaving? No, I'm leaving. You're leaving? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is, there, is there any reason we want uh, Ned here for the center court discussion? I actually do have a question. Could, could you stay for just a sure. moment longer? I, I mean, if we start with the question, then you can leave after that. It's let's just let's really start with the question, because this has been a continuing discussion, so we're jumping into the middle. So let's start with the question. So I just wanted to clarify whether or not any of the work has been done in center court, because when we talked about this a long time ago, when we were still meeting at the DPW, it was my understanding from you that a process had started. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted survey. to know where you're at. With that. Northeast survey did a survey out there. It could be used in either direction for a private to public way conversion or for use for utility easements. I definitely own a water line in the center court that um, through the whole process that if it failed as a public way that I would take an easement for it to maintain it. Same thing we're doing with Hebert Avenue right now. Mm -hmm. There is no resident support to make that a public way, yet we have storm system, we have a drain system or a water system and access to the uh, Mill River Diversion. So even though we're not making the Way a public way, we did a full survey of it, so we can understand what's out there to make sure we have the proper reasons going forward. So we do have a survey of Center Court, and the surrounds the buildings, and we know where everything is basically out there, okay? So as a follow-up question, what additional steps would need to be taken in order to um, prepare it for taking if that were in fact what we're have what was going to happen? We'd have to have a meets and bounds description of a layout put on the plan. So basically a surveyor working with a city solicitor describing what we intend to take, what the city wants to take. And what do you see as the outstanding cost in that process? I mean even just a ballpark figure. I never see any of the city solicitor bills, so I really don't know. Okay. I see the survey bills. Survey work, I think, was about $1,300, $1,400, if I recall. But that's completed. That's saying. completed, yeah. And what what was, a, for a similar kind of situation, what had been the total when you did a taking 
what had been the total that was invested in a particular site of street? It's quite a range to it right? because the length of the street versus the search field survey work, the legal work, the recording documents. Um, I think the most expensive conversion was probably in the six or seven thousand dollar range. And that's just survey services, not legal fees. And what would be the low end of that kind of spectrum of costs for taking? Probably, probably in the $1,500, $2,000 range by the time things were completed. Right now, the survey work for Hebert and Center Courts to a point where it still needs additional survey services that I get billed for. It's just not complete yet. Even with the easement, it's not complete. So you're suggesting the entire process would take any could take anything between two thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars and six thousand in survey services. That's correct. Like I said, I can't speak to legal fees because I don't see them. Okay. Okay, I'm talking the survey service. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? I don't think there's anything else at my Right. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else then on this Senate report issue that you would like to discuss? Yes, come up and sit with us. Now we, now we haven't been over yet. I don't want to rehash what we've done, but if you want to come to, we had discussed when we do our last minutes the possibility from this committee uh, moving forward with some kind of recommendation. Um, and I would, and you were going to, yeah, go ahead. I did check with the solicitor, and I think you followed up on my communication with the city solicitor regarding this. So, you want to share what you sure. learned? Um, the solicitor, uh, let me see if I can summarize him right. I hope this is accurate. He said that um, he believes we should, if we want to have the council weigh in, we should do it in the form of a resolution. Here's why. The mayor doesn't want to expend any resources for something that may fail. And I, well, he doesn't support, but I think the, the basis, I think it's really, he has, it may fail, so he doesn't want to expend the resources. And the council doesn't have the resources itself. Because there is a cost associated, there's some costs associated with it, and so the solicitor's suggestion was that the council could choose to do a resolution to gauge whether or not there's the support to take it as a public way, and that that would be a guidance for the mayor whether or not to go forward and actually have the department and the mayor expend the resources. That was my understanding. And the resolution, like any, that could be sponsored by either this committee, uh, the two of you, however you'd want to do that. You could get other counselors on board or not, up to up to four. Well, the, the, if two counselors were to do it outside of this committee, that would, yep. they would, comp they would uh, comprise a quorum in this committee and oh, this committee. Be open meeting Right, so it would have to be one person from this committee if it was outside. I would not vote to support that resolution, but if the two of you, we could, it could be a, it could come out of this committee if the two of you wanted to vote out of this committee. And it wouldn't be unanimous, but that would be one way to go. Well, one of the reasons that I wanted to ask about the cost is, um, you know, that's been kind of um, set up for us as one of the reasons why the mayor wouldn't even go forward because he would be paying for something, he would, the city would be paying for something that he doesn't even see um, needs to happen. So what I understood just now from Director Huntley is that um, 1.5 thousand, uh, $1,500 have 1.5K has already been spent on the survey. Um, and in general, the all of the work that needs to be done for um, the taking of previous streets has been anywhere between um, 
$1,500 and $6,000. Yep, and I want to emphasize, because I did hear the figures. This, this came out way back when we were talking about how much it would cost. That is just the survey work. So if you add in the, the legal work, which you can imagine when you're paying lawyers at a couple hundred dollars an hour, I may be wrong, but I remember asking this question and Terry had, Terry Cohen had more information. I remember we were talking about one street in my ward that we were looking at a total cost of $10,000. And that included the legal fees for a very small street. So I think that the cost would be a little higher. And I'm not sure, we'd have to have a mayor. I don't think it's just, I think it's spending any money, no matter the amount. So I'll try and speak to the mayor here I spoke to about that. I think it's whatever the amount, if it's not going to move forward, it feels extremely wasteful to spend money on something that is not going to have the support. So it takes me back to, I think that's a good way to go, which would be a resolution, which is why spend even a thousand dollars if you're not going to have the support of the council to take this as a, as a public street. But some of those fees I just want to point out would be after a decision had been made to do the taking. So getting up to ten thousand dollars wouldn't happen just in doing the prep. No, I agree. But, but yeah, I, to tell I you the, the truth, point. I see no reason to spend five dollars if the council's not going to go ahead and approve this and doesn't have the votes to do it. It just seems to me like why are we spending both the time and the energy right. to do something that's not going to be approved if there's an avenue where we can see if the council the votes are there. I think that's an actually creative solution to say, okay, we can see if it's if it's here. Um, well, I, I would say that I would like to see this committee sponsor that, and I understand that you are not in favor of doing that, and so I guess I'm looking to you, Councillor Adams, whether or not you would want to have this committee do that. I think that we don't have anything to lose. I think with more in the information that we've gathered over time, we can present this to our fellow counselors more accurately. We can make a case for it. If we, in fact, believe in it, we can make a case uh -huh. for the fact that we don't think it's a good idea. Um, but it gives us an opportunity to have discussion on the council floor. Lo and behold, in preparation of this meeting, I came up with some language. But it's, oh, it's just three I'm whereas. Shocked. It's three whereas, is, and it's just objective. It's not really, you know, strong support or not. It's not a masterpiece. But I'll read it out. I mean, Councilor, if it's not a masterpiece, I'm not sure we want to waste our time giving the five dollars or not. Go ahead. It just says center court resolution. Whereas there has been an ongoing discussion as to whether center court should be taken as a public way, and whereas there was a previous motion to reject the taking of center court as a public way, which failed by a vote of 4-4-1, four, four, and, and whereas the City Council must come to a final decision on this matter, now therefore be resolved, the City Council requests that the Mayor prepare an order of taking of Center Court and further request that its submission, that it, that it be submitted to the City Council. So, I mean, it's just basically getting that vote. Yeah, that's, all, that's, all, that's all we'll do, we'll just get, get the vote. All right, so, so what the vote would be saying, that the council meeting, what I would say, is what we're saying, because the mayor has already told us he would veto this, so it would therefore need six votes, is that correct? Well, well, this this would need five, but yeah, I mean, so, right. if it's, it so gets I would five, argue from the political thing, thing and say, veto, you're going to override the veto, so so it's not, an, it's not an ordinance, it's not an order, we can't order this, so it's basically saying we're requesting this. It's, I mean, we can't, in a resolution, say that the money has to be spent. No, we can't. We can't. That's why I request. We can't order them. I don't think we can order the mayor to really do anything except so Spencer. Well, well, as we know, a resolution doesn't have any enforcement power it anyway. Any so it's really just a statement of the will of the... So why not put it in a, in a, clear, a clear language that just says, why isn't it even just one more ask that we believe that center court should be a public way? A resolution that just says that doesn't even need the background information. I mean, that could come out in the discussion because I mean, that's sure, really agree. that's the vote. It's really to, instead of confusing it, just say, look, how many counselors believe center court should be a public way? Let's take a vote on it. I mean, sure, this we could read this city council resolves that the mayor requests an order of taking for center court. I mean, but I mean, I, 
Yeah, I, that's what I would stick with, and then see what the vote is, and I kind of agree. and, okay. and have a discussion about it. Clear, it's really clean, clear. and if you end up with with six votes, then then you can say, okay, let's. Well, it's it's a resolution, so it's like any other measure. The veto. I read the the charter on the veto power, and it and it extends to resolution. So, if the mayor. You could send it back to us in the second reading, vetoing it. Yeah, and if it has to get six votes. That if it, sounds like if a, it fails on first vote, it's done. If it passes with five, the mayor or more, the mayor vetoes it, and it comes back and it gets six and passes, or it gets five or less and fails. We would need that five and six majority, even if we know we have a council of standing because of conflict of interest issues, correct? Yeah. I, I believe so. Yeah. Because I think the chart. You know, that's, I'm, I'm, that's a question. I'll, I'll double check. So. But. Uh, I think it's a two-thirds vote. It's two-thirds of all counselors or two-thirds of everyone voting? I, I'll check the chart. Because an extension counts essentially. Right, it may say six votes. And if it yeah. says six votes, it's six to that. So you're checking that right now. I can check right now. Mr. Andrews, the reason I'm asking about that is because we know that we have one abstention from one of the counselors who owns property on Center Court, so he feels like he won't be able to vote on anything that he proposed here. You probably knew that, but I just thought I would clarify. Okay. Thank you. Can I interject sure. a little bit of my knowledge that maybe you can uh, get something from it? Uh, I've uh, spent considerable time on Senate Court. I think I, I think I got my degree. Um, but. Uh, yeah, money has already been spent on the survey, um, and Ned has a pretty good idea of what he has to deal with. Um, and uh, um, for what it's going to cost to finish it up, I have the plan. Uh, I left it in my car. I didn't think I was going to, but uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it, it gives quite a bit of detail of uh, what is going where. Uh, and th there is more that needs to be done. Uh, in, in my calculations and uh, <coughs> also other people on Senate Court, and I'm only speaking for myself, that um, uh, uh, the uh, ongoing I'm in process is, uh, and I had one other thought that just left me, I but uh, it, it's, uh, uh, the, the people on Senate Court are really talking about, well, if the city isn't going to provide the services, then we're going for rebates uh, on the property. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's all commercial here, basically, outside uh, eight or so apartments. So uh, doing the survey, uh, you're finishing it, and yeah, coming up with um, something that uh, uh, it could, could be used for a plan. Ned is going to get more information. The council will get the information from the city engineer if this is something that, that the city can live with. And that uh, yeah. work uh, was already done on these other streets before they were taken as, or uh, before there was a final vote. Yeah, I don't, you know, when I say not to spend the money, if the feeling was to make this a public way for other reasons. I'd have no hesitation to spend money to do this. The problem is there are other reasons why this was rejected as a public way. It, it, yeah. Those those concerns about what would be spent or not spent came later. So first, that committee that was looking at those streets, I was very involved with that, really tried to come up with the criteria of and was very liberal in their interpretation. I mean, that's what our charge was to them way back on this committee when we were at the Joint Committee. Our charge was to stretch this as much as possible so that if a street was kind of in the middle there, make it a public way. But, and that was the intent of that committee, and I saw them being very, um, there were a number of streets that I know they went back and looked at again, and a number of those became public ways. I think there are a number of concerns about the parking there. I mean, one of the issues would be about parking there, and you're able to park now. I mean, I heard one person say, okay, we'll take it as a public way, but we'll put 
metered parking all the way through here. It's you know it's downtown and it can't remain as as just a big parking space. So I think the concerns. So I'm not concerned about the money spent. I'm concerned about the other issues that came up in terms of how would they plow this? Where would the parking be? How would this really be a street that felt like a public way? Mm. Um, yes, I, I understand those concerns. And uh, if, if it was labeled uh, as a big parking lot, it, that that isn't really the case. Uh, the the uh, uh, people respect other people. They're parking on their own property. They're not parking on the right of it. We have uh, uh, some abuse of the right of it. Uh, I mean, it's minor. Uh, it's open all the way down through uh, a good 80% of the time. Well, and I, th I think one of, the, one of the things on today's meeting is I think this is a dis the discussion, because I think we'll move forward with the resolution. Yeah. And I think you have good arguments. I think those are the kind of arguments that we'll need to hear and see if you can convince more counselors, even myself, I'll be open to hearing them again, and hear um, yeah. those arguments mm -hmm. and see if the council will go ahead and get the number of votes to do this. Mm -hmm. The, uh, oops. No, that's not, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. The, the uh, charter says that if it gets vetoed, then it needs two thirds vote of the full city council, so my reading is that's six. And that's, that's even what's if true for zoning and other things for that. You have to have the six votes, so. Um, so now the resolution reads, the city council resolves the mayor prepare an order of taking of center court and further requests its submission to the city council. And then the discussion can just be around around that and your arguments and other people who want to come we can have that debate on the on the floor of the council and i'll sponsor it councillor Hahn, you can too if, if you okay. choose to uh, i thought we were actually doing it as a committee well, would you like to do it as a committee but it doesn't have to be unanimous it could be as a two to one vote is that is that yeah is that okay because sure. i think it might be better to do it as the committee so it's yeah, up to you fine. guys I'm, i just think Councilor Klein, if you would. Okay. Council, uh, Pam, would you mind formatting this? I will. Okay, thank you. Can, can you just send me the wording? Sure. And then I'll, I'll take it up. Do you want it on the council agenda for this week? Uh, yeah, I guess we do have time, don't we? Yes, please. I will not be there this week. I'm missing I'm away for two. But, so, you won't have a chance to sway me then. And then you're going to have two people missing. I mean, you'll have one extension and maybe so. Well, it's going to get referred to ordinance, I would imagine, first. No? Resolution, so no, no, no. But I just, I just no. wanted to ask if you guys were going to vote on your wording first. Oh, okay. at a formal vote. Like, okay, yeah, all in favor of the uh, resolution that's read by Councilor Adams a moment ago, say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, but that's up to you. If you guys want to, there is a chance you, that the arguments would convince me to, to be swayed. I, I doubt it, but it is always possible. So this would actually be the first vote on Thursday as opposed to cancel on Thursday. Well, it, then perhaps we should, you know, take a little more time to craft and get it in for the following meeting. You won't be here. I'm going to miss two, two meetings of way of working with them. It's greasing it a bit. Yeah. I will say, too, that the, you know, getting it on the, the council agenda, I will need to run by Bill first, the council president. <laughs> so if he says it's going to wait, if, you know, that would be the only reason yeah. why it wouldn't be right now. Okay. So I'll yield to the two of you to decide on timing. You know what, you, I, actually, I'm yielding, but I have a suggestion. If you wait until the second, even if I miss that meeting, I would be there for the, second for the second one. And even if we don't have the whole arguments again, I'd be willing to talk to you and say, look, we had people come, here's the thing, and 
you know. Well, I'm sure the center court advocates will be able to come to both meetings, so you will get to hear okay. them directly. I just don't want the whole council to have to sit through the entire argument again just because I missed the meeting. But I'd be, I'm very open to even sitting down with you and, and hearing the arguments. Yeah. You'll, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be here the 15th? No, I'm going to miss the first and the 15th. Okay, so you might even want to push it further. I mean, we'll but then you'll miss, you know. I feel like we also want to be careful that we're not getting into the, into the new year. Yeah, you might want to do it on the 15th. The year. It's going to be two weeks. Yeah, it's 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 just it, it's, uh, it's it's tough. It's, it's tough to have a vote with that. It's something that's going to ultimately require a supermajority with only seven million members. Okay, got to. I, I don't know. So we just have to weigh that. It's a fact. Yeah, it's winter. And that street may need city services. It's, if it's going to be taken out of the public land or should be so. I don't really know. Well, I think you're going to get a sense of that first vote. It may be that my vote won't really make any difference. Yeah. And if it is going to make a difference, then you can lobby me hard. Yeah. How's that? <coughs> so I'd be there for the second vote. If it passes. Okay. If it gets fine. <laughs> when the rest of the, by the way, the resolution if there's one abstention and I'm not there, the resolution is just a majority of the council's president of the meeting. Is that the full council? No. Do, I, I, every, I don't remember if there's a whole case on that. Is remember. every vote the whole council? Because if you've been missing a couple of councilors, I can't remember if it's a, I can't remember if it's a majority of a person's president. Or an actual Pam would probably remember when or, back yeah. Okay. Actually, so in other words, if we had eight people here, we know that we have an abstention, so we're down to seven potential voters, yeses. Only one person could in fact vote no or two. Two because no. on the first vote. Right. On the first vote it would pass with five. And right. Let's ask you. Yeah. We need a little bit of um, adjudication here. So the question is if, um, based on the number of members that are present in the room, can we vote just to pass the resolution, or if it's um, we need the majority of the entire council? So um, we need five. If if nine people were here, would we need five? Or if we have eight people here? Which I vote for a resolution. Would, yeah. For a resolution. Uh, I think that the would be the council rules that would dictate that. I might even be in charge. I'm looking okay at right now. Yeah. What if there were three abstentions on an issue? Would you still need to have in the all nine councils? Would you still need to have five yes votes, or could you have three abstentions? Four yeses and two noes. It's still passed. City solicitor once gave me a case about this. And I think it said that it required a majority of persons present if there was a quorum present. That's, so, that's generally. But I, that's just my recollection, and that was, I think, maybe under the old charter. So the old charter, for example, says everything requires a minimum five votes unless it's one of the special ones that requires six. Right. And that would be it. So that's what I'm looking for right now. Tell you what, can we find? We'll get that answer. Yeah. And then, would it be okay to put this on the agenda? Was I'm not sure if this was the agreement. Is it the agreement that we'll put it on the agenda for October 15th or try? And and then we can find out the answer to that yeah. question. Would that be? Yeah. Council. Okay. okay. So we'll try and get it on the agenda for October 15th. Yeah. Okay. okay. That would be great. If uh, any of the councilors have any questions for me, uh, it's certainly uh, my number's in the book, and you can give me a call. I'd be happy to answer any question I can for you. Great. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. I didn't come to Senate for it. Hopefully, I, uh, okay. just as a matter of just uh, more information, I had an appointment this morning up at the VA to uh, they get a hearing aid and they canceled it. I was for 11 o'clock and they canceled it at 9 o'clock. So no. I was hoping to have it for the meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were you able to hear what we were saying more or less? 
Pardon? Were you able to hear what we were saying? I was here, but I, I had to really concentrate on this thing. Yeah. Yes. I, it's been a problem for a long time. I was a pilot and uh, damaged my ears. I damaged them in the service, and I damaged them in my training. So uh, I wasn't really uh, uh, thinking that uh, uh, I was uh, indispensable and I could, I could not be armed. And it's uh, just amazing how it creeps up. And I'm up to the point now where it would be very useful. Hopefully, it likes me. But, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. So the next um, next item, number four, discussion regarding Florence Row. Councillor Klein, that's you, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, I I kind of put them here with a grain of salt because I wanted to ask the committee. I know that this is really um, transportation and parking commission uh -huh. in, uh, discussion, but because it's the Department of Public Works that oversees these roads issues, I was wondering if there was any point in um, using this just as a forum to kind of explore possibilities or if this committee would ever be involved in something that has to do with transportation and parking. So I, I mean, I guess... And I was really this for the two that. for Nana talking on forums? Yeah, same discussion. because there are kind of serious issues kind of on the table that are kind of immediate and um, until we meet again with the Transportation and Parking Commission, I thought it might be useful to kind of have some discussion here. If it feels like it's really inappropriate if we're going to be stepping on toes, you as veteran counselors would know better than I. I would feel the place that might overlap and help me here would be in the place where I wouldn't want to be discussing the actual content of like, should this be a parking space, how far from the road, because that really is transportation and parking. That's mm -hmm. what they do. Um, and they do a lot of work, and to have that another committee stepping in on there, I think, would be difficult. But where I would feel okay to commit is if there's something like the DPW has not gone and put the sign up yet. The actual practical pieces around the issue of where the parking is, I would feel that would be fine for us to discuss. Why is it taking three months to get them out there? Why was this done? Uh, that that I would feel okay about. I, that's just my my feeling. Yeah. Okay. So the two, there are two different issues that um, feel like there is a certain amount of urgency around them. One is Florence Road has been, as I'm sure you both know, under kind of major construction leading into Pine Street. Yeah. Um, it was supposed to be finished by the end of September, but because they found that the bridge on Pine Street needs to be buttressed, it's they're not going forward with the paving. In the meantime, you probably know, you've heard quite a bit from Councilor LaBarge over the past many years. We had been waiting on state funds to get traffic calming measures on Florence Road, right around Ryan Road. That hasn't come forward. It's a very, it's acknowledged kind of universally that it's an extremely uh, dangerous area. People speed down this hill. There's no sight line to when people are coming out of Ryan Road. Um, so a number of residents of the Ryan Road area have been really pushing for a speed bump. The DPW had this idea that they were going to put down a temporary speed bump. It didn't seem like a good place for a permanent one because, uh, because of the rate at which uh, plows in the winter have to go. So they pull these temporary ones up in the, in the winter. Um, but because of the slowdown, there's no point in putting this temporary speed bump down because they'll have to pull it up in a matter of a month, month and a half once the, the paving happens. So I guess I just wanted to have a discussion about whether or not we felt like there should be some exploration of a more permanent traffic calming um, edifice there like a speed bump because this means we're going to go a whole other season where people don't have any... So I would say on that kind of issue, because the one thing transportation parking has is they have other people there who understand even the engineering of this, which we don't have. So yeah. that does feel like we're beginning okay. to get into, if you were to say, look, the DPW said they were going to do this, uh, you know, or they were going to 
discuss it or they're gonna, and they haven't moved it forward, and I'm feeling frustrated that they haven't discussed it. And then I would feel like, yeah, we should really talk about that. We should really talk to them about, you know, if you're gonna do something, there should be some kind of framework of how long it takes. And, but when we get into the content, I would feel that would be transportation. That's, part. That's, I just have to point out, that, and based on that reasoning, under the old formation where, we, where it was the conference committee, it would have made sense there uh, because we would have had them in the room, but now yeah. we, don't, we, don't just, we just don't have the same access to them. But if, if this, was, Generally, a, if this like, was a kind of timing kind of sad, problem like, or they're not putting the resources, we could invite them to come, but I agree. I mean, I you know where I stand. Thank you. Some. I appreciate your forbearance on this. The other issue is a little bit different, and that is that there is a particular home on Montauk Street that has been, in a period of three months, has been um, struck by a speeding car twice. Um, the TPC just um, voted on doing a traffic study on Montauk and measuring speed, so that's all in place. But within a matter of weeks after that decision was made, and it takes a while till they actually yeah. you know, put out the, the measurers and all of that kind of thing, this house was struck a second time by wow. a speeding car. The house, the house itself it didn't just come on the property, hit the house? It, ca it came onto the property, hit their fence, and because the, f the fence, I think, prevented it from actually coming into the front of their house, but it was very close. It's a family with an infant, and um, they're really scared and really concerned. And so I brought this to um, the DPW and said, <clears throat> is there any kind of temporary thing we can do just to keep this family safe? We don't want anything to happen to this family with an infant. And I was told, because the traffic calming, uh, the traffic study is has been voted upon and it's going to happen in the coming months and we're going to get the, the, the information from it and we'll do the analysis. We're doing what we, all we can do. So my concern is um, can we not kind of compel the city, is the city responsible to maybe put boulders in front of the house or something that yeah. would keep this family safe in the interim? So that's the other, that's the other thing I'm going to stop. I know that the, we've taken emergency measures in the past. Yeah. That you know maybe you know have have just um, yeah this without necessarily an ordinance or anything in the effect like for example when that person was killed in the crosswalk over yes. there. Yes. Yeah. And we have taken emergency you, measures. In we the don't past. need to do this for the They they could the DPW could put up something like uh, bring over a boulder. I don't think they did that, but you know they have those concrete um, kind of dividers that you have around construction sites. They could have one of those over there. So have you talked to them directly? And they said, that's we, we're doing everything we can do. Um, Ned's feeling was, Director Huntley's feeling was that we can't set the precedence that you know, we already have this process in place. And if every time there was an accident, we immediately, and it just didn't, I felt like we Me, need to it, act Yeah, on I mean, one. if we said a precedent was, any house that has two cars within a, a five-year period, strike it or it's lawn. I mean, you're entitled to you know. I mean, it, I mean, one of the things we could do is just have more of a discussion with him about that because that would seem to me that this is a very unique case that twice a car has threatened a house. I remember. Um, the incident I was referring to. And I remember when that happened, there was an interesting discussion, I believe, if I remember correctly, because Councillor Freeman Daniels was saying, you know, well, where do you get that authority from? You know, you, you, yeah. Where does the authority come from to, without any, any council um, approval or, or measure to just you know, do stuff like that? Yeah, okay. and I don't, I don't really remember what the whole analysis was, but I, I think that the mayor felt that there was the, in, in emergency situations, in the they can take those sorts of measures if there's, in fact, a public, some sort of public safety emergency. Yeah, public safety emergency. They do that all the time. You have an area that's flooded, they put things up around it because the area is flooded um, or potentially going to be flooded. They put things like that. So, I mean, DPW is charged with taking care of keeping safety and safety out of Is there some role this committee can take in kind of 
encouraging that process to happen because I feel like I had a kind of door shut when I tried to do something around it. Can, can I just ask a quick question before I answer that? So, so this happened twice in one week. Not in, one week. I'm sorry. One in a period of, I think it's like three months, maybe four three months. Three months. Okay. And so, and it, and it has to do with the people speeding on non -attack. Was there any? There are other mitigating kinds of, not mitigating, there are other factors. That's what I was, that's what I was gonna ask. To it. They live in the house that's at the bottom of um, the Pine Street, you know, where there's that weird little triangle in the middle and you yeah. can go right or left, but people never know that's where to go. Maple starts to It's Maple, it's yeah. not Pine, it's Maple. Um, so they live right at the bottom of that, so they're, I'm not even clear where the car came from, if it was coming down Maple, I think it was coming, it was driving on Nonatuck, and there's also like a little curve right there, and there are cars coming out kind of unpredictably because it's not clear how to make the left or right hand turn. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Talking about. Yeah. It's a very confusing little intersection. People speed down on it, like people are kind of coming out willy nilly. So there may have been another car coming. I don't know all of the details, but just the fact that this house was hit twice in a period of a few months is the concern, basically. Well, I mean, I mean, if I lived in there, had a bit, I would put up saw horses. I'd put some red flags there. I mean, I would do something like that as the owners of the place as well, right away. That, not expensive. I mean, I wouldn't like dig a pit to put a, a concrete pole in, but I would do something like that if, it's, if they're that worried about it. You, can, you know, that wouldn't be expensive for them to do. Just put a saw horse and put some red flags up on it. But, um, go ahead. I was. Uh, I mean, if the, if the committee wanted to, we could, you know, yeah. send some sort of message, sure, some sort of request uh, to the mayor and the DPW. The other thing too uh, might be good to get more uh, statistics from the police department about other accidents that have happened there throughout the years, possibly. If if we think that that place is particularly unsafe, I mean, I would certainly be happy to do it even now with two instances over a few months. And if you wanted to draft a short letter and, you know, if it could come from the committee, I'd be fine with that. Would you be okay with that too? So how would that work again for open meeting law? Because if I'm drafting something, if you guys are willing to endorse it as a committee, you need to see it. We want this to happen really quickly. I'm just... If we did it like that, we wouldn't be able to approve it outside right. the public, yeah. you know, I and outside the meeting. Um, we could make a real quick request that right now that, that we could all agree to, or the other thing, and, and, if, and, if, and if, I, uh, I actually don't know the answer to, if if we just say, sure, go ahead and write it, and reflect what we've said here, I don't see that as being a problem, but I don't, you know, I don't have a, you know. Well, one of the things that we might consider doing is I have this letter that was written by the homeowner um, and just attached to it uh, just something that says the Public Works Committee respectfully requests that emergency measures be taken to protect the house from... That's fine. That's fine. And, that's fine. and that be kind of the language of it. And I mean, I, do you want me to read the letter to you from the homeowner so that you know what the content of that is? Does that feel important to well, you? Well, if you could forward it to me if you want. I don't need, I don't need yeah. to go back and confirm it afterwards, but you could forward it to, to us for informational purposes and, and just, okay. that'd be great, thank you. So do we want to take a vote on that? Yeah, sure. Okay, so we want to vote with the, uh, somebody, can you put it in? Sure, uh, I motion. move, I move that the committee requests that Councillor Klein um, send a, a letter to the Mayor and Department of Public Works uh, requesting emergency measures be taken to protect the, this family from uh, from traffic hazards and attach the, the letter that the family has written. Can I hear a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Um, any new business? So none, and a motion to adjourn. So, Thank you.